Hello again, everyone. My name is Sana Ahmed. I'm a network security custom success engineer. And the topic for today's webinar is best practices for integrating API client and syslog for SaaS security API. So what to expect in the next 60 minutes? Uh, we will be sharing some useful resources and what's new in SaaS security. We will also be sharing some best practices for integrating syslog and API client on SaaS security API. Now, this will be followed by a question and answer session. Please feel free to enter your questions in the question and answer chat box, and we will be addressing those at the end. Now, our first topic is syslog and API client integration on SaaS security API. Now, before we begin, I would like to quickly overview with you what is syslog and what is an API client. Now, syslog can be defined as a message logging standard through which any application or device can send data about events, diagnostics, and more. Now, syslog itself relies on a syslog server. Syslog server is used to collect syslog messages in a single location. Some may be physical appliances meant for large-scale environments, and others may be software-based services or applications. Now, please note, syslog communicates via port 514, via UDP. Now, what is an API client? An API client is a set of tools and protocols that operate from an application on a computer. You can configure an API client to pull log information from SaaS security API and perform additional actions. An example of a third-party API client is Cortex-XOR. Now, syslog and API client integration on SaaS security API. You can configure a SaaS security API to interface with syslog servers and API clients. Organizations that have standardized on a specific security information and event management tool can leverage this feature for monitoring data collection and other workloads. Now, syslog receiver with the SaaS security syslog integration, you can add a syslog receiver, for example, Splunk, to enable SaaS security API to push log information to external log servers. And API client with SaaS security API client integration, you can add a third party API client, for example, Cortex XOR, to pull log information from SaaS security API and perform incident and remediation actions. Now, please note that SaaS security API supports one syslog receiver or one API client app with access to log data. You need to delete the existing configuration before you add a new one. If you want to use both Splunk and Cortex-XOR, directly connect Splunk to Cortex-XOR using the Splunk integration. You need to create a client ID and client secret for Cortex-XOR to directly connect to SaaS security API. Now, our next top is, topic is syslog integration on SaaS security API. Now, syslog is a standard log transport mechanism that enables the aggregation of log data from different sources into a central repository for archiving. SaaS Security API can forward every type of log it generates to an external syslog server. The syslog feature requires TLS 1.0 and above communications protocol for connections between SaaS Security API and the external syslog server. In this topic, we will describe how to configure syslog monitoring and we'll be sharing with you a description of supported log types and log files. Now, configuring syslog monitoring on SaaS Security API. SaaS Security API supports the following log types, which is incident log, policy violation log, remediation log, activity monitoring log, and admin audit log. Now, what you need to do is you need to go to the settings page and choose external service. Then you need to click on adding a syslog receiver to create a syslog server profile. Now you can add one external, so only one, you can add only external service. We can forward the logs to a syslog receiver or add cloud apps to SaaS security API. Then you need to enter a name for the profile The ad adding information on SaaS security API require, require you can add, you need to add the following information uh, to, to connect it to SaaS security API. 
you need to enter a name. When then you need for the server profile, you need to enter server IP, IP address of the syslog server. You need to enter a port, the port number on which you send syslog messages. Then you need to enter a facility, select a syslog standard value, for example, log underscore user to cal calculate the priority field in your syslog sub implementation. You need to choose a message format. Uh, so you need to select the syslog message format to use BSD or IETF. Then once you hit save, your changes will be saved. Now on the syslog server, you can sell sign your server and create the SSL certificate. Then you can enable TLS in the syslog configuration, setting the TLS option to peer verify. And number seven is an optional step, but you can customize the format of syslog messages that the SaaS security service sends. You can select the custom log format tab and you can select a log type to create a custom format. Once you click OK, you can save your changes. Now, our next topic is syslog field descriptions. Now, in this topic, we will be sharing the list of the standard fields of each log type SaaS security API can forward to an external server as well as the security levels, custom formats, and escape sequences. Now, in order to help parsing, the delimiter is a comma, and each field is a comma-separated value string. I will also be posting the links in the chat for the description document, as there are a lot of field names. Now, the first one is incident log fields. The incident log is generated when an incident is detected. The log includes fields that will be shared in the documentation, which are available for ingestion by a security information event management system. Now, please note that files are listed in the order they are needed in the push. The fields are listed in the order they needed in the push mode. Now, remediation activity log fields. A remediation log is generated when an incident is manually remediated or automatic remediation is applied. Again, the log includes the fields which will be shared in the documentation which are available for ingestion by our security information event management system. Please note that these fields are listed in the order that are needed for push mode. Now, policy violation log fields. The policy violation log is generated when an asset matches a policy rule. The log includes the fields shared in the documentation, which are available for ingestion, again, by our security information event management system. Similarly, no, you need, please know that these fields are listed in the order that are needed for push mode. Now, activity monitoring log fields. The activity monitoring log is generated when a user activity rule is matched. And admin audit log fields. The admin audit log is generated when SaaS security API administrator performs an action, such as a remediation of an incident, creating a new policy rule, or adding internal external collaborators. The log includes the following fields, which are available for ingestion by our security information event management system. Now, again, similarly to like the previous fields, please note that these fields are also listed in the order that they're needed for push mode. Now, API client integration on SaaS security API. Now, SaaS security API includes a REST API to give you the ability to write API clients to integrate with SaaS. Please note SaaS security is hosted in the United States, in EMEA and APAC. Now in this topic, we will be further discussing Cortex XOR for SaaS security API, adding your API client to SaaS security API, API client authentication, and API references on SaaS security API. Now Cortex XOR for SaaS security API. Now before we begin this topic, I would just like to share with you what is Cortex XOR. Now, Cortex XOR is a comprehensive security orchestration automation response platform that unifies case management, automation, real time collaboration, and threat intel management to serve security teams across the incident lifecycle. Now, SaaS Security API is now available on the Cortex XOR marketplace. With this SaaS Security integration, Cortex XOR collects incidents from SaaS Security API for improved security orchestration and incident management and remediation of risks 
posed by data exfiltration on your organization sanctioned SaaS application. Now, in addition to the incident management and incident lifecycle capabilities that Exors offers with SaaS security, with, with the SaaS security playbooks, you can take actions on incidents just as you do now on SaaS security web interface. Now, these include closing incidents on Cortex Exor using the same closed states to which you're accustomed. You can remove public sharing links on assets. You can quarantine assets. You can restore quarantine assets. You can send email notifications to staff security administrators to request remediation of incidents. And you can notify asset owners and provide remediation options to staff security administrators to resolve incidents. Now, our next topic is adding your API client to SaaS security API. Now, you can configure a third party API client, for example, Cortex XOR, to authenticate to SaaS security API using OAuth connection for efficient incident management and remediation. To do so, you must first add an API client on SaaS security API to retrieve the client ID and client secret that your API client requires for authentication. When you add the API client on SaaS security API, you specify the incident management and remediation access you want to grant the third party API client. Now you can only connect one third party API client. For that, you need to go to settings and choose external service. You then need to click on add client app. Then you need to enter unique name for API client. Then you need to authorize the API client for specific scopes. The scopes are for log access, incident management, and quarantine management. Now you can use these scopes in the post request to the OR token endpoint. You can save your changes to grant SaaS security API the ability to generate and display a client ID and a client secret. Now please note that you need to immediately record the client secret that displays after dismissal. You cannot access the client secret again. So configure your API client with a client ID and client secret to authenticate your API client to SaaS security API. Now API client authentication. Now for API client to authenticate to SaaS security API, you must provide the client ID and client secret generated when you register the API client to SaaS security API. And you need to configure the client to retrieve on OR token. All requests must use the region specific host with HTTPS in, in America's APAC Remia. Now, to get started, we'll be sharing with you how to retrieve a token and what are authentication errors. Now, the API client can retrieve a token for SaaS security API using host request. Now to request a token, SaaS Security API submits the request with the OAuth client credentials. Now again, I will be sharing the documentation for requesting headers, requesting parameters and response fields, as there are many headers, parameters and response fields and it may not be possible to cover them all. Now authentication error errors. Authentication errors include the no basic auth header. If you will not include the basic auth header when retrieving a token, it will result in a 401 response. To resolve the issue, you need to see the documentation on how to retrieve the token. Please know that all requests must use the region specific host. Now, API references on SaaS security API. The HTTP request methods and log events API can use to retrieve events are HTTP request methods and status code, log events API, incident and remediation API, now, HTTP request methods and status codes. Now, for that, again, I will be sharing a documentation with you on various request methods and HTTP status codes that can be used to retrieve or modify resources on SaaS security API. As again, uh, it, it may not be possible to cover them all since there, there are many. Now, log events. API, a registered API client on SaaS security API can log all the log events endpoint to retrieve events as they occur. You can retrieve the following log events. Uh, please, please know that all the requests must use the region specific host, uh, but the following log events that you can retrieve are activity monitoring, incidents, remediation, policy violation, and admin audit. Now, 
Incident and Remediation API, a registered API client on SaaS Security API can manage incident state and perform remediation actions based on the asset related to the corresponding incident. Now with the Incident API scope on SaaS Security API, you can retrieve and update incident status. And with Remediation API scope on SaaS Security API, you can quarantine asset to the administrators folder for immediate review and assessment and restore quarantine assets. Now again, please know that all the requests must use a region specific host. I will be sharing the documentation for all the API references on SaaS Security API in the chat, so you can study them in detail. Now this brings us to the end of our webinar. Please feel free to post any questions in the chat box and we should be able to answer them for you. Thank you.